Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Fred and Friends, a belated episode, we shall call this, because uh, last night I had all kinds of troubles, but I got to tell you, it's worth the wait for all of you. Um, I got two very, very special giants of the industry on here tonight, uh, Mr. Bud Orr and Mr. John Gregory. Um, I mean, man, you couldn't ask for two better <laughs> high-profile guys in the industry of paintball than these two guys. And it should be fun. It should be a, a pretty interesting show, too. And when I say interesting, I mean uh, because of Bud and John. Uh, those are two very interesting guys. And you get these guys together, look out. So I got I to gotta roll real quick through my, my talking points because John says I'm a microphone hog. Now, I don't know who told him that. It was either Bud or Bill, one of them. But uh, oh, it, it cut deep. It cut deep. But anyhow, I'm over it already. I'm over it already, and things are looking good. So I just want to real quick, um, I, I got to mention tonight, the um, ICC Wine Truster Classic, July 29th through the 31st at Paintball, New York. Uh, it's the same place that we're going to have the WCPL New York Classic, and it's going to be June 4th and 5th. Great, great field. Uh, one of the oldest fields in the world. And uh, if you get a chance to go, you're going to absolutely love it. Uh, you want to watch Will Rail? He has a spin the wind deal. Uh, it's pretty cool. I watched him. He's a he's a pretty cool guy. Um, you know, he uh, will put some pretty darn cool stuff out there. I, I absolutely like it. And then I got to mention the um, Constant Pursuit is putting together his team again. If you get a chance and you want to join up with all of us, uh, get a hold of Dan Ringer on Facebook. Uh, Danny will hook you up and set you up and get you up and rolling. And then I got to mention the Hall of Fame game um, that is going to be held by Hanu, J DJ Hanu Fox. And it's going to be May 19th and the 22nd at Hell Survivors in Pitney, Michigan. Uh, you're going to want to go and uh, check that out. Even if you're not going to play there, go check it out. You're going to absolutely love it. And then Monte Casino. Monte Casino is coming up. I had a great time there last year. A lot of fun. Um, it's at Paintball to go in Root House, Illinois. And it's going to be June the 4th and the 5th. So if you get a chance, uh, you're going to want to head up there. Okay, real quick, I got to I gotta go through these. Now, I give my shout outs at the beginning of every show. This is one thing I will not, I, I won't miss. Because these guys all worked very hard back in the day to make Paintball what it is today. And uh, I, I know John's going to be all over me. Uh, the minute I come on, he's going to go, yeah, damn, Mike Hogg. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. But anyhow, real quick, I start with Mr. Tim Schloss. Tim Schloss had Tiger Stripe camouflage back in the day. And you know what? There might be something going on with Tim um, and Tiger Stripe, but um, who, I can't say nothing. Now, I'll, I'll let it go. Anyhow, um, he has Gateway Paintball right now, and he's going to have the last of the WCPL tournaments this year. And it's going to be at um, Gateway Paintball in St. Louis. And, you know, you're going to want to go check that out. That's in October, and boy, I got to tell you, it's going to be absolutely great. And Karen Devon's watching. Hey, buddy, how you doing tonight? Kenny Stewart, Kenny Stewart, General Paintball Museum, terrific guy. Ian Jaquas, boy, you know what? I butcher your name, Ian, all the time, but you know I love you, pal, big time. Yeah, and then, okay, uh, Mr. Dan John Colby uh, had Air America back in the day. They have Immortal Air now. They've been my sponsor for 32 years, guys, long, long time, and Dan's got a field now uh, called Panhandle Paintball up in, uh, obviously, the Panhandle of Florida. So if you get a chance, you're going to want to get up there and give it a shot. And then I've got uh, Mr. Bud Orr. You know, yeah, there's just not much you can say about Bud. It, everybody doesn't already know. You know, he's uh, one of the highest profile figures, one of the nicest guys. And uh, he's actually on the show tonight, too. So I'm not going to blow a lot of smoke up his ear. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bring him on here in a little bit. Uh, but terrific, terrific person. War Game Products. Everybody knows that. Mr. Tom K. I mentioned Tom every every week. Tom is, uh, he was one of my sponsors, Airgun Designs. Mr. Rainey and Juby Boucher. Um, terrific people. I had paintball news back in the day. Two times a month, you could go out to your field and grab a newspaper. Didn't cost you a penny. You knew what just happened, what was coming up where all the fields were, yada, yada. It, it was just an absolutely terrific thing. Uh, Randy Camilla, editor for APG. Mr. Jerry Braun, editor for Paintball Sport Magazine and owner of Paintball Sport Field uh, back there in New York, where uh, the ICC is going to be and the WCPL this year. Great, great, great field. That's all I can say. And then I got to say hi to Mr. Ross Alexander, my very first market sponsor, 
line SI. Uh, Mr. Jim Lively, two tournaments back in the day you wanted to do. One was Masters and the other one was Jerry Brown's World Cup. Those were two. They were like uh, family homecomings. You go there and everybody that you knew and everybody you liked was always at those things. It, it was just absolutely terrific. I loved it. And then Gino from Belkin. I mentioned Gino every week because, uh, you know, people don't see a lot of stuff that Gino does. He does it behind the scenes, you know. Um, he just doesn't uh, go out and say, hey, I did this for you. I did this for you. He just does it. And uh, so I mention him every week. Pretty cool guy. And I got to mention the two little Gong guys, Mark Gong Jr. and Jaden Gong. Terrific, terrific kids. Part of the Hermans, a team that I absolutely love. Ah, real quick, Mr. William Bailey. How you doing, Bill? Good. How's it going, Fred? You ready for this? Uh, I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you, are you seat belted in? Because, man, if you're not seat belted in, you're going to fall off your chair when I bring these two guys on. I'm not seat belted in, but I got a helmet right here. That I, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so you guys should do what I do. I glued myself to the chair. So I, I'm, a, I'm all good to go now. It took a lot of glue, though. I got a pretty big exterior. After that last 15 minutes, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, last night, you know, and uh, I apologized to everybody at the beginning of the show. I felt bad about it, but that never happened before. That, that was pretty interesting. I mean, we had one time where somebody hacked us and we went French. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. So that that pretty much sucked too. So, what do you? That. Yeah. What do you say we pull these guys up here real quick? Yeah, uh, them up there before we lose them. Before, before <laughs> anything happens. <laughs> so please, everybody, I want you to welcome. Let's start right off the bat with a very good friend of mine, a terrific person. The guy's done. So much for paintball. I'd have to list it on toilet paper and I'd have to use a couple rolls. That's how much stuff he's done for paintball. Please, everybody, welcome Mr. Butterworth. Hey, you, what's going on? How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. How about you guys? Doing great, man. Uh, we got one of your buddies coming on here with us tonight. Uh, yeah, you know, old, old Johnny boy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys got some stories. You know, I'm going to hit you guys up with. A, I'm going to hit you up with a story that when he took you flying. Oh shit! Yeah, and then I'm going to hit John up with the story when he landed in the tree. Now, if you're not a good pilot, you're not going to land in an 80 foot tall tree. That's pretty tough to do. So, kudos to John. So, everybody out there, please, it's my pleasure tonight to welcome. I I don't think he's been on any other podcast. And I can tell you why, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he was, he was out picking a nose. Yeah. <laughs> Please, everybody, welcome the co-owner of JTUSA. Please, Mr. John Gregory. How you doing, John? <laughs> I'm here. Don't push any buttons. <laughs> You know, hey everybody, we've uh, it's been challenging uh, to get all four of us together on this, uh, and, and not have not have something click off or click on. And uh, my my hats off to John's daughter Laura. Laura, if you're listening, babe, I got to tell you, you work miracles. You know, um, you're, you're looking at a bunch of old guys that try their butts off, and sometimes it works, and sometimes she no works so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, I, I am very, very glad that you could join us tonight. And, um, you know, I, I was talking to Bud earlier, and, uh, you know, Bud was telling me about a ride that you gave him because John's an avid flyer, everybody. And uh, he's got his own plane. And uh, my guess is your own airspace. Uh, but uh, <laughs> thanks, and there it thanks, is. John. Thanks, John. Yeah. That's a glare. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So, John, um, real quick, you know, you, you got to tell everybody the stories because you sent me the the picture of an. You said you were an eighty foot tree, and when you said eighty foot, you weren't kidding. What exactly happened? Well, I was making a flight from my ranch to my house in uh, in uh, central Idaho going from the ranch to McCall, Idaho. And I was about four miles from the airport and the engine just quit. I had, I had fuel, I didn't run out of gas. I, and to this day, I still don't know exactly what happened. And so instinctively, you just kind of go back to what you were taught when you were coming up or were trained for. And fortunately, I've been associated with a 
company for a long, long time. Uh, it's called McCall Mountain Canyon Flying, and and right now, my my wife owns that that particular country, and she probably saved my life because when something like this happens, they teach you to always fly to the crash, and that's exactly what I did. So it was. Uh, it had the potential of being really ugly, but I'm one of the luckiest pe people in the whole world just to still be alive, actually. Well, you know, John, I've seen a picture of the tree, and even after you landed in the tree, if you'd have fell out of the tree, that would have killed you, too. Oh, yeah. That was I, the scary part. When I, when I hit the tree, I didn't breathe for 20 minutes. I was afraid to. <laughs> but after a while, I kind of wiggled around a little bit and decided... And after the gas quit running all over me, that was another. Ooh. I could just see myself being a flaming tiki torch. But, I, you know, it took the whatever precaution I could take there, and it never happened. But So anyway. how'd they get you out of there? What's that? How'd they get you out of there? Well, uh, my next door neighbor, the, about two or three hours later, he knocked on the cockpit, cockpit window and said, Hey, John, it's Randy. I'm going to get you down. And he was the guy, his name was Randy Akers. He, he was a, he basically, that's his business is climbing trees here. And he had uh, come up the tree and, and arranged for a, a rope to be strung down. And so they repelled me down from there. That was the wow. scary part. So he, he climbed up there to get you out because I seen a picture of that tree. I just I wish I could put that on screen because it was amazing. Yeah, it was 80, 80 feet high. It was it was it didn't, didn't look, look like that high when I hit the tree, but I, I didn't even know it was that high until they told me later. Well the picture you sent me, it even looked taller than 80 feet. Hey, it looked like a big redwood. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, it was so, fun. You know, Bud, Bud was telling me a story about uh, when he went flying with you one time. Uh, Bud, maybe you could tell uh, the viewers a little bit about that. Well, John and I, when I go visit him on his ranch, we get up at um, 10 o'clock in the morning because you got to quit flying at 2, you know, because of the winds. So we went ahead and uh, we took off. And John landed. He's got to tell you the story about the um, about the bear when he went fishing. That's another one. That's a good one too. But anyway, we landed where the bear was, you know, and then we took back off and ran a few other places. And John said, "Well, I'll take you to a special place." I said, "Well, okay, that sounds great, you know, because he's always doing that." So went on and. We're flying in this in this canyon, you know, and John's heading for a canyon wall, and I'm sitting there thinking, John, um, do you think you might want to spin it around or pull it up or something? Oh no, we're okay. I said you're flying in a damn wall, man. I don't want to die today. You know, and you're not gonna die, you know. So he swung it around, you know, like he always does. He's the he's the best pilot, uh, I mean, ever. So he swung it around, you know, and he leveled it out, and and he's flying for another wall. I said, John, Jesus Christ, man, I don't want to die today. He said, don't worry about it. Hannah told me how to do this. I said, well, you practice much? He said, no. So we're, we're flying into this wall, and then he dropped the flap, and he flared it out, and he lands on the side of this cliff i mean it's like i would say a probably about a 26 7 degree angle and oh, he wow. just you never even felt it he just idles up to the top and we get out and i clean my drawers you know <laughs> I, I had to go right away i mean there's something to that and then john and i hung out there a, a, about an hour and he had a few stories about that so then he turned around and said, let's go. And we I swear, we didn't go 30 feet and we're flying right on out, you know. And I, I would. <laughs> now, this is off the side of a guy, hill, right? You know, huh? This is off the side of a hill? Well, I, on the side I, of a hill. Wow. I mean, uh, I mean John, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's, how steep is that? 
Well, pretty, you called yeah. it about right. That was about the right angle. This yeah. was a strip. There's uh, where I live, Fred. Uh, I live very close to the middle fork of the Salmon River in Idaho, central Idaho. And there's another river called uh, uh, Big Creek. And there are about five airstrips on it. And the only reason to go into them is just to have bragging rights. And this particular one that Bud's talking about was called Mile High. It just happened to be Mile High. But it's, it's uh, like I said, it's all in the wrist. But it's fairly easy to go into, actually. <laughs> you think so. <laughs> A newbie I, does think that. Hey, John, was this in 2019 you landed in the tree? Uh, yes. Yeah. Somebody just put this up there. Uh, Weather.com news, 2019, um, Idaho pilot rescued after small plane gets stuck in tree. They <laughs> get stuck in tree. Yeah, they got that right. <laughs> well, you know, you know, Bud says you're a great pilot. You got to be a great pilot to land in a tree. Well, I got to tell you, <laughs> that that whole thing went went viral uh, worldwide. I was on the news, the, the, the evening news in New Delhi, India, the next day. And I have a friend that was kind of a computer geek. He was a good friend of mine. And he said that 48 hours after this happened, this story got over two and a half million hits. Wow. So I can't go anywhere. I'm, I, it's going to be on my tombstone, I'm sure. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question, John. How'd you get the plane out of the tree? Well, they, they couldn't pull it out with a helicopter. It really stuck well. One of the trucks broke broke loose and wrapped around the tree. They had to cut the tree down. Oh, wow. So obviously the plane was no good when the tree hit the ground? That's right. It was fixable in the tree, but not when it hit the ground. Wow. I'm unbelievable. You know, that's, that's an incredible story. And, and Bud's an incredible story, too, you know, flying, because, you know, you and Bud go back a long time, huh? Yeah, a long time. Bud's probably the only guy I've really stayed in touch with in paintball, which is kind of sad, I guess. But he's been to the ranch two or three times, and I go visit him whenever I go to Southern California. Yeah, you were actually on the show. Uh, we were talking to Bud uh, just a few months ago, actually, when you were down there. And that was the first time we seen you. And, man, I got to tell you, I got so excited because, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people, John, still think the world of you. You know, uh, you started uh, just like Bud. You two guys started organizations that, that changed the face of paintball, guys. You know, I don't I don't know if you guys realize that, but you absolutely did. Bud with the autococker and you with uh, just everything that you did, the clothes, the masks, everything. So, John, what, what got you? Yeah, the goggles for sure. Yeah, yeah. John, what got you started in that? Well, uh, you you remember, of course, Marty Tripes. Oh yeah, Marty, absolutely. He and, was with Scott too. Yeah, but Marty was working for me at the time. He was running a retail store that we had established. As you know, I my roots were in motocross and dirt bike uh, right. racing, and <clears throat> Marty came in one day and. He had these red whelps all over him. I said, Jesus Christ, Marty, what happened to you? And Marty said, I just had the most fun I've ever had in my life. And you've got to try it. And I think it was the very next weekend, Marty and I went uh, paintballing in a field uh, near us. There was a guy named Tim Marshall that had a field just outside of San Diego. And that's when I saw the only eye protection. And that was before, you know, the 285, I guess the, the, the thing is still the same. 285 feet per second is the rule now. Yeah, I, I think it's gone up to 300, but 285 is a good one. Yeah. But we drove up and got all the all the cars were running and and everybody was putting their their 10 grams on the on the blocks of the cars and Guys were freezing paintballs and eat them up. <laughs> and <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I don't know how many. There was a couple of people that made goggles in the very beginning, but there were. That was one of the first things that paintball ran into was eye protection. And when and when I finished that day, 
I was right there with Marty. I never had so much fun, and that's what got me started was that first game. That was the hook, huh? Then it was on? Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, I had Guy Cooper. Uh, Guy Cooper sent me these the other day. Um, he sent me a couple things. He, he sent me this, and then uh, sent me a patch from 2004 for Oklahoma D-Day. And then he sent me this shirt, and Bud says that uh, he's got one, and Bill's got one. And we'll explain it in a minute, but let me hold a shirt up. Called Scooter Ball. And Guy Cooper sent me that. And Bill, you tell us a little bit. You said you got one of them? It, well, it, it's Bud Scooter Ball. It, it's in the museum. It, it's just a scooter with a paintball gun mounted on it. And... Uh, their plan was to set up a field almost like a football field with obstacles and you had to kick a giant ball from one end to the other to get a point. That was and it, without, huh? Without getting shot. Yeah, Guy so Cooper said... You had guys kicking themselves around on these scooters shooting the gun because it was mounted on the handlebars. And... Uh, yeah, that's scooter ball. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I thought it would be motorized or something like that. I didn't know you had to kick it around. No, oh, no, it was just a little, yeah, foot powered. You know, just... So, Bud, you had one of those. Did you ever get to go go out and use it? No, I never did. <laughs> never did. Nah. I modified it. Oh, and did you? Yeah, I put a motor on. It. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's front page news. <laughs> so, yeah, John, you know, you guys sponsored me way back in the day. Um, I love the JT goggles. I, I'll i never forget the first pair I got. I was so excited with them. Um, and then you guys sent me the shirts and everything. I, I took a picture on the Arc of Triumph in Paris looking at the Eiffel Tower, and I walked all over Paris with that JT shirt on. The name just, uh, and everywhere that I went over there, you know, everybody goes, oh, JT, you you sponsored by JT. And I go, yeah, yeah, it's a great organization. So I got to tell you, buddy, you had not only a good product, but you guys were terrific sponsors. And you treated me excellent back in the day. I absolutely loved it. We were, we were, uh, we were well known in France <clears throat> before paintball because I sponsored two or three or four of the French national champions that eventually were world champions. And even one of them that came here, his name was Jean-Michel Bale. So the French were, were well acquainted with, uh, with JT, at least the brand name. Yeah. That was motocross, right? <clears throat> right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that's where you got started. Somebody, somebody typed in that uh, the JT goggles back then actually had tear offs on them. Yeah. We tried that. Well, the, the first goggle was actually a motocross goggle that we modified the tool to accommodate a hundredth uh, 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 inch. I guess it was a, to take a, a much thicker lens of Lexan. Right. And so it was an over-the-glass model that we adapted to paintball. Yeah, well, I just, uh, I know they were great. I, I liked the... Uh, the facial part. Uh, so when you started with the paintball thing, um, obviously you had the goggle. Did you come up with the, the face mask part? You know, the part that covered the cheeks and the chin and everything like that? Well, in was... the very beginning, it was all a motocross thing. We had a mask that we made for, for dirt bike riding. And then later on, we came out with a goggle that we made just for paintball. <coughs> And then, of course, there was a follow that was a crossfire mask. And then we came out with ear protection and, and, and a better face mask, face mask portion for the existing goggle. Yeah, it was absolutely terrific. Uh, and, Bud, you were the JT back in the day, too, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I used all JT stuff. You know, uh, J I think I guess Jones goggles came in. Right after John did, and um, Marty put a stop to that pretty quick. So, <laughs> yeah, he uh, he come over and got me, and he said, "How fast can you make a gun shoot?" I said, "Pretty damn fast." 
<coughs> so he says, okay, I, I, I need you to crank it up and test the goggle. I said, are you kidding me? He said, no. So I cranked it up and I shot right through it. I said, whose is this? He said, it's Jones. Now, now, use your other gun and shoot the JT. I said, I did. It bounced off. And it was cranking up probably the other gun was probably about 375, 400. Wow. And, and, it, and John's goggles just, you know, it, yeah, that was point blank, too. That was muzzle block. Yeah. I know, Fred, our, our original test was to shoot that goggle with a 12-gauge shotgun. Well, you oh, missed. Not yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> Who was wearing oh. it? <laughs> Wasn't me, <laughs> Marty. Yeah. I, I, I know Mar you tried to get Marty to do that. I know that. So. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, you know, and you know what I liked about the JT is, you know, I like to get. And then you guys came out with the visor, and and the visor was a big thing. It uh, the visor just blew me away. Everybody had to have the visor because it took a lot of the glare off when you were out there playing with the sun shining down. So, you know, you were, John, you were ahead of the curve on a lot of stuff back then yeah. when you were started going. And he don't forget the, the fan the, we had on it, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, the we fan. had the fans. Everybody had those. <laughs> it, was it was pretty cool. But the problem was you'd be sitting there, you'd be hiding in the bushes, and you'd hear. <laughs> <laughs> And you, you thought everybody else could hear you, but they couldn't. <laughs> well, what you did is you shot where you thought there was mosquitoes. <laughs> but you know what? It, it kept the fog off the lens. So, you know, the, the little bit of humming was worth every bit of it because there was nothing worse than going out and playing and getting real hot and fogging up. And that just sucked. Now, what do you got there, Bill? I just know old pair, JP. That looked familiar, yeah. John? Yeah. Is it Bill? Does it have zip ties holding the lens in? No, I, I, I've got some of those though. The, the old whipper snappers. We used to leave the zip ties up so they look like antennas. Yeah, exactly. Right there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Ron Kilborn out here used to do that all the time. He had that bug look. <laughs> yeah, you know Ron. Everybody knows Ron Kilborn. <laughs> oh yeah. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, John. So, you did know, you still have? Did you still have? Uh, were you in on this modification to the to the hopper? The what is collar? it, Bill? I can't see it. It's a speed collar. Yeah. Yeah. We had we had some trick fillers. I God, I can't. Is can't that really a, see? Is that is ours? That a, is it an original package? Yeah, that's the original packaging. You know, put that, that cool. up on eBay. You can get a bunch of money for oh, it. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't sell anything. That's a, I, I'm a museum. <laughs> yeah, he's got it. Did I ever Go tell ahead, you how I met? Did I ever tell you how I met John? No, but that'll be a good story. <laughs> this is like <laughs> the late 80s or early 90s. I can't. But John was, we was in a big tournament. And I think it was in Florida. And John, had, well, I did it, and John always did it, too. We'd always go there early in the morning. We'd pick up trash and, you know, make things look nice around all of our gear, you know. And so I, I'm sitting there doing that, you know, and nobody ever done it before, you know. And I'd say this old fart over there, you know, and he's sitting there, you know, picking up trash and shit, you know. And, and so I went over and talked to him. And, hey, I, I thought he worked there, you know. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, so we talked a little bit, and then John, I said, hey, um, where you work at? He said, right here, JT. He said, I own it. I said, are you sitting me? <laughs> you own this? You know, John, John is, uh, he's, he's so plain. He's the neatest guy in the world. You wouldn't, I mean, he just... He blends in with everybody and everything, you know. Whatever well, Bud, wait doing. a minute. I got to jump in here a minute. I wasn't the only one that ran that company, but you know Rita was. She oh, was no, half Rita of the was, history Rita and was, Rita half was of there. the memories and half of everything. So we were in it together. She no, no, Rita she stuck was with a, me the whole way. Part of it. Rita was yep. a big part of it. I actually know? got that on the crawl going across the television right there. Um, 
he along with his partner Rita built a terrific company. So yeah. I don't I don't know if you can see the crawl on your phone, John, but uh, I've got that that runs right across the bottom. And it oh wow, Rita. that's you know, print's too little for me. Yeah, get binoculars. You yeah, Re in thing. fact, Rita is the one that named the company. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, so what does JT actually stand for? J is for John. No, we nope. uh, we we had we had just started out. Our first product was socks, and anyway, we had to get a business license. So Reed and I went down together, and we stood in line for about an hour. And finally, we get up to the front, and this big old fat gal says, "We," she says, "Well, what's the name of your company?" and we, Said well, all we want now is a business license, and he, he's and she said, "Sweetie, you either give me the name of the company or go to the end of the line." And <laughs> and we had bought our first bunch of motocross socks in Tijuana. They were basically soccer socks, and I said, "Well, ship, you know, let's just call it TJ Racing." And Rita kind of jumped in and said, you know, that didn't start out just right. And so it was her idea to flip the flip the letters and call it JT. But that's exactly where we got the name was backwards for Tijuana. Oh, that is so cool. Wow. Now, see, that's that's what I'm talking. That's a story that you just you don't get anywhere oh. else. No, I know that. Unbelievable. And Rita, wow. Rita could sing like no tomorrow, too. Oh, is that right? No oh, yeah. Right, wow. John? Yep. She, she was good a, at that for great sure. Voice. Great you know, voice. Yeah, you guys are talking about, you know, how you guys met. You know, Tim Schloss is, uh, you know, a very, very good friend of mine, one of the best guys in the world. And when I was at my first tournament at um, Lively's Masters, we were out there playing, and we were a bunch of nobodies. And we were banging away, and we were doing really, really good. And... After every game, this guy would come up and go, oh, oh, you guys are really doing great. You're doing great. And then he'd walk away. And I'd go, who is that guy? And nobody knew who he was. This went on for two straight days. And at the very end, the last game we played, he comes up and he goes, oh, oh, you guys, you guys got a great team. Oh, you got a great team. He says, you should talk to me. And he walks away and I go, who is that guy? And he goes, well, that's Mr. Tim Schloss. He owns Tiger Stripe Camouflage. I went over and talked to him, and Tim and I've been friends ever since then. And uh, you know, I, you know, I love the I love Tiger Stripe Camouflage. He's uh, a terrific guy. But uh, you know, John, you sponsored me back in the day, and I got to tell you, when I would call up the company and I would need something, I, I didn't even hardly ever wait for it. It's like you guys were standing at my door. I would get it the next day. And I would just go out and promote the living heck right out of your stuff. I, I absolutely love JT. And when I first met you, I was so impressed. You were you were such a mild guy. I, ex I expected a, a corporate guy running around like a chicken with his head cut off and yelling at everybody and stuff. And you were just, you were so mellow. Well, that's back then. I don't think you're that way now because you gave me crap about hogging a microphone like I'm doing, I guess. But... Uh, <laughs> But, but back in the day, you were that way. <laughs> well, guys that pick up trash have to be fairly mm. humble. So. <laughs> so so, Bud thought you were the trash guy, huh? Yeah, a lot of other people did, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that changed real quick. <laughs> hey, you oh, see, hey John, you, look up. You see that bag next to Bill? Where's the bag? That bag? That blue thing. Put your. I'm on my phone. Up. I can't see it. What is it? Well, Marty tried. He thought I was a proctologist or something. I'm not sure, but he put <laughs> he put out Doctor Orr. Oh wow! Yeah, he well, made that. He, he made that bag in your shop. You know, Marty. I remember many times. I'd I'd go home. I was always the last one to leave and I'd start turning out lights and I could hear somebody on the sewing machine in the sewing department. And it was old Marty. You know, he yeah. was a hell of a seamstress. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he His was a pretty good guy. How to sew. Yeah, he was a pretty good guy. You know, we, we did some traveling. We traveled overseas and stuff together and uh 
after he let you uh, left you, he obviously went to Scott Goggles. But uh, I got to tell you, back in the day, to me, the, the JT was the bomb. It absolutely was. And then the way you guys kept inventing stuff to make it that much better each time was really, really cool, too. I had an incredible R&D outfit put together. We had the original employee was his name was Jerry Parks. He was a big part of it. And I had uh, John Dondero out of uh, Sun Valley and Chris Dawson. And uh, that I got to give those guys they're 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 the ones that were really behind the product. I kind yeah. of said, well, we need this. And boy, they would come up with killer stuff. They did it every time. Yeah, we got Francis Swain says, uh, still the best markers of JT Impulse, by far a favorite. This Francis Swain that I'm talking about, um, we were at the Woods Ball last year, John, and they had a 10 man there. And after the first day, five of his guys left and went home. So he, he was going to take the other five guys and go finish the 10 man. And a bunch of kids jumped in and, and gave him a hand. But the point is that he did, he wasn't going to give up. And just because five guys left, he wasn't going to quit. So him and I became very good friends now over the last year. And he is a Francis Swain. He is, he's the future of paintball. The kid's like in his 20s. And his attitude is fabulous. He's, he's a chef back east at, at a restaurant over there. But uh that's what we need to, you know, to keep paintball rolling along. Like him and the, the two little gong boys, Jaden and Mark Jr. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really into these guys to, to make paintball even bigger and better. Um, but, you know, you guys, if you look back, you know, you take JT out of the equation. You take Bud Orr and War Game Products out of the equation. Paintball would not be what it is today. You guys were... Uh, to say pioneers in the sport is actually kind of a weak, weak way of saying it, but that's exactly what you guys were. Well, we enjoyed people. <laughs> well, you always have. Yeah, you're, you know, hey, people that, that have never got to talk to either one of these guys, you know, first of all, if you ever see them, walk up to them and shake their hand and talk to them because they're the nicest guys in the world. But, you know, Bud, you know, since you and I have... Oh, I think I got somebody here that you guys are gonna gonna know. Let me see here. Can I help you, sir? Hey, what's going on? Hey, everybody. This is Mr. Tim Schloss, uh, owner of Tiger Stripe Camouflage back in the day and Gateway Paintball right now. What do you think of these guys, Tim? I'm telling you, you got two legends that you're talking to right now. Yeah. And I mean, it's just really great to see John. It's always a pleasure to see Bud. But, you know, I got something that happened today, and it must be karma. But I was cleaning out a warehouse with Greg, and we found a body armor that John made for Greg when he was seven years old. It's hard plastic, for like, like an old motocross one. And uh, I said, man, John made that for you back in 92 or 93. And now <laughs> here it is. Uh, well, John, thanks. We still got the body armor, and my grandsons are going to be wearing it soon. Good wow. to you, Tim. Yeah, Good talking uh, to you. But you and I really long time. Remember, John, I was at your office out in the, uh, Chula Vista, and he had a new motorcycle still in the crate sitting in your office, and that always impressed me. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> That was about the only one I had. <laughs> I love it. You know, yeah, I'll tell you what's really a trip is I got three legends right now. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I got John, Bud, and, and Tim, you know, and, oh, and like I say, well. all three of you guys. Uh, well, you know, you know, everything that both of those guys made was nothing but first class. I never saw any junk come out of either one of them, and I just always appreciated that. Well, that's the same thing about Tiger Stripe, my friend. You know that. Well, I always tried to make as good a product as I could, but that stuff that uh, John had, John's really, there are two reasons I got back into paintball in 88, was I went to Jerry Braun's tournament up there in New York, I hadn't been playing in three years, and Marty was there, and he had those goggles, those, uh, I don't know what they called them, but it was a little mask with the face plate. And I said, now we can see. And then I got to shoot one of Cassidy's pump guns. I said, now I can shoot. And I got back in and then the rest goes from there. Yeah, I had to tell him the story about how you and I met at the Masters that time. 
Yeah, and I, uh, yeah, and then I was tiger striped after that all the way. Oh, yeah, you should have won that tournament. You yeah. were doing really good. You know, I, I, I hear a rumor out there, um, something about that there might be a 2022 tiger stripe coming out. You heard that? Uh, I keep hearing it. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I've seen some pictures and some stuff somebody sent me. We'll, we'll see what happens. I, I, will, I, will, I guess we need to find out there might be any interest in it. But, you know, if there is, maybe something might happen. You never know. Oh, I can guarantee you there's interest in it. Yeah, I, I, I've seen the pictures myself. And, uh, you know, I'm going to probably talk more about it in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, maybe eventually I'll get one of those so I could wear one of them. But I think, go ahead. Yeah, no, you know, there's there's a company, you know, the company that owns JT now. They're they're make they're they're doing a ton of retro goggles now. Oh yeah, they got a great goggle out right now. Actually, um, yeah. I, I can't remember the name of it right now, but uh, I just looked at it the other day um, online. It's a a beautiful goggle. Yeah, it's retro stuff. So, well, anyway, listen, I'll let you get back to the guys, but John and uh, Rod, man. Thanks for everything you guys have done for the industry. I mean, you know, John, you made it safe for everybody to not lose their eyes, and Bud, you made it uh, fun to shoot people. So, <laughs> anyway, I'll let you guys go, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, All right. Jim. Bye, Jim. 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 Say hi to Terry for me. I will. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, buddy. Hey, everybody. That was Mr. Tim Schloss. Tim Schloss had uh, Tiger Strike back in the day. And uh, I, I threw out a little teaser because uh, you guys going to run, you know, Tiger Strike, I, I got to tell you, it's probably the most uh, popular pattern I think I've ever seen in camouflage. And uh, there's a rumor now the 2022 version is going to come out. And, um, boy, I got to tell you, I'm waiting for it. I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. And next week, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, John and Bud, you guys both know about Tiger Stripe for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, John, I got to tell you, your, your story... Uh, is just excellent you know i even i even learned stuff about jt that i never knew the name i thought was incredible the story it's just uh unbelievable uh, tijuana backwards jt so yeah, did, did you go, go ahead bill i thought it's i thought it stood for jeff thompson ah yeah that's what jeff said on here too <laughs> jeff thompson's a guy a friend of ours up in canada he's a terrific terrific guy <laughs> Matter of fact, I think he's in Mexico right now. I think he texted me. I think he's watching us from Mexico right now. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny, believe me. Jeff Thompson would be good, but JT, I I could have swore that the first the J was for John. Never knew what the T stood for, unless it was like tender or something like that, you know. <laughs> so that was a heck of a story, absolutely. You know, John. Your, your reception's been pretty good the whole time here, buddy. I don't know why. We went to <laughs> hell in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> That's not even the word for it. You know, I, be, before we even got on tonight, too, uh, we, we were testing everything. And uh, I, I wish I would have had recorded all of it because it, it would have made uh, America's Funniest Videos. Absolutely. You would have had to bleep half of it out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Brian Courtney said Bill's beard was a legend, but it's gone now. Yeah. It's coming oh. back. It's growing back now? Oh, yeah, it's already coming back. It, it, it won't be gone for very long. Very cool, very cool. So, do you have any plans now, John, or are you just uh, hanging out and flying your plane and enjoying life? Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> I live uh, kind of half and half in this little town called McCall, and the the ranch keeps me alive there's always something broken or something you have to do and and of course flying is my life now i love i i just love to fly i fly a lot in idaho i've never flown in alaska but i fly a lot in in utah also there's about idaho and utah are the only two really backcountry flying friendly states in the union besides alaska oh really but yeah. I'm very active in that. And and it's the only way into my ranch most of the year, too. So I use that. I use a plane like you guys use a pickup or a car. I fly oh, nearly every day. Does it snow it, a lot up there? 
Oh yeah. In the winter, I have skis on the plane. My the airstrip I live is I'm at sixty three hundred feet. That's the elevation. The airstrip is eighteen hundred feet long. Of course, it's dirt, but it's got a seven percent grade on it. And uh, I fly a, a, a called a Super Cub. It's a, a Piper PA eighteen. And the legend thing they say about it all the time is that you can just barely get killed in a cub. And honestly, I've, I've tried three or four times and got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I know Bud's story when he was telling me, man, his guys, they look like 250 cent pieces when he was telling me. So that had to be an exciting ride that time, that's for sure. But Bud can tell you, too, that I can turn anything over. So yeah, we were in a four-wheeler one time, and I managed to do oh, that. Shit. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> anyway. Right, this is a great story. John let's hear it. John just, come on, Bud. Let's go for a ride. We're going to go see this, uh, uh, what do they call him, John? Uh, Outfitters. Yeah. You know? And so we went down to see him, you know, and a nice guy, you know, had a hunting party. And so we're we're backing out of that, and the next thing I'm I'm laying in the dirt, and John sitting on top of me, about ready to kiss me, you know. I said, "John, this is a hell of a way to meet, man." <laughs> and we got out and flipped it back over, and we went on. What were you driving? What was it? It was a uh, Polaris. Uh, no, no, it was a Honda. I'm sorry, Yamaha Rhino. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Got it. It was it was cool. Yeah, yeah you just All got right. back off. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, bud. No, we when I first went to John's place, he had a an old bulldozer, you know. He said, Ah, that thing ain't been running in years and stuff. I said, Well, let's start it, you know. He said, You think you can start it? I said, Yeah, we start it. He said, I never found a starter on it. Well, it was so old. <laughs> they started it with a gas motor that, you know, a little engine sitting on the side of it. You fire it up and then you spin the diesel over and it fires up. Oh, so wow. we, got, we got it running and him and I were running all over the place. On this, I don't know. How old is that thing, John? I don't uh, know, but but it's never been started since the day you did. I've, I've left it. I've been afraid to, to drive it oh. because if that friggin' thing quits in one of the roads, I'm screwed. So <laughs> yeah. I'd never be able to move it. Well, we shoved, we, we shoved over some trees and stumps and stuff with it. It was, it was cool. You know, no, it's, uh, he, his ranch is heaven. Heaven. It's like, what is it, 55 miles from the nearest main highway? Yeah. And, Oh and, wow! Uh, when I think it was built in 1907, yeah, 1903, somewhere in there. Yeah, and uh, the original cabin's still there. I think it's about 12 foot square, maybe. And then the his cabin, his main one, is just like a Taj Mahal. And then the one Kathy and I stays in the same thing. You know, he got three major cabins, and he don't have pay anything for electricity. You know, oh, off it, the grid, it run, huh? It runs, no, it runs off, yeah, it runs off a pulsing wheel. There's a river oh, wow. that runs behind him, and it's got, a, I think, a 120 foot fall for the water off of a lake, a little lake he built, and it runs a pelting wheel. So he has generator year round. The only oh, thing he's got to do cool. is he's got to grease it once in a while. But, right. No, this place is, um, last time we were up there, it's like, what, 100 head of elk were eating, you know, elk, like, not even 50, 100 yards from us, you know. And in the morning, you know, it, 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 you can see where they've been eating around. The, well, if you get up early enough, they're eating around in cars and stuff. So, oh, how absolutely but, cool. Oh, Fred, wow. I'm, com I'm, com I'm completely off of the grid. Yep. But I have, I have every amenity... You have except a hardline phone. We even heat we heat the the cabins with electricity. Wow! So you must have a big generator hooked to that then. No, uh, it only puts out about seven kW. There's not a lot there, but it's, uh, seven. It's that's more a quite adequate. a bit. Yeah, seven kW is quite a bit actually. Hell of a battery bank. No batteries. No batteries. Really? Holy crap! Yeah. No batteries. 
So as long as the water runs, we're good. Yeah. Wow, that is outstanding. Did, did you put that in or was that in there already, John? Well, originally there was an old system. Of the old boy I bought the place from uh, made the, the uh, paddle wheel part of it out of a 32 Ford rear end. <laughs> and then I, when I got there, I put in a very sophisticated system. And, and it's, it's run 24-7 every day since uh, 2004. Wow. Hey, John, I got Ryan Courtney. Um, he asked, he goes, curious why John sold JT and also what prompted him to start JT? Well, to start out with, I sold it because they offered me a big old wad of money. So that was, <laughs> that was the incentive. I was I 60, 61 or two when I sold. And... Uh, <laughs> Now, what what did he say? What was the other thing? Uh, the other thing is, well, what prompted you to start JT? Oh, well, I was an avid uh, dirt bike rider. And it was in the very beginning of motocross. And so I, I had access to some European friends and started, you know, our first product was socks. And it just grew from there. And I, I've funny. sponsored the best riders in the world over you know, a period of about 20 years or so. So wow. that, it, was, it was a love of the sport again. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I used JT back when I used to use baits and then they were hot in the summertime and John came out with JT. So I switched to that and that's all I ever rode in JT stuff. It's cooler. Boy. You know, yeah, JTs back in the day, they were the they were the bomb. That's all there was to it. You know, I was always so proud too. You know, when I was sponsored by him to to wear the shirt around because you know I then I traveled an awful lot then and I'd go to fields every weekend. And when I had that JT shirt on, I just get hit with a million questions about it, and I absolutely loved it. It's very right. very cool. John showed me at one of his bikes one time. Crazy ass. GR500 Honda. He said, yeah, I used to ride it on the pre-runs. I said, well, I'm, I'm badass enough. I can ride that. Shit. Man, I got off that bike so many times. It, I, uh, John, I, I think he made it so it would throw me off. You know, <laughs> I'd plow up more fields. I would jump on that thing and either do a wheelie or haul ass through the desert where there's no trails. Really? <laughs> oh my God! It, it was badass. Uh, and John rode it like it was a tricycle. You know? <laughs> What'd you do? Did you soup that up, John? No, that sucker was box stock. I, only thing I knew how to do was clean the filter and put gas in it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was something else. Yeah, you've had a few motorcycles since then, huh, bud? Uh, yeah, a couple. A couple. Uh, John, John rides a Harley. Oh, does he? Uh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And a Jeep. He's got a Jeep. I'm ah, sure there you go. Bud made a, me get the Jeep. It's a oh, twin of mine. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah I like called, you. He called me about three months ago. He said, Bud. How do you get this thing in four wheel drive? I said, <laughs> you pull a lever. He said, Well, I'm pulling a lever and it won't move. You know, he's stuck and it needs to be in four wheel drive. And he said, I don't know where the hell he was, but he were on the phone. And I'm trying to teach him how to run it. I guess there was something jammed in it, but some guy come in and pulled him out. Well, you don't and have to lock the hubs or anything, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he, he did that. He locked the hubs, yeah. But he, he couldn't get the front wheel engaged, so. Well, it had oh. those big old off, off-road off tires that are about 12 inches across, but flatter than a pancake. And I was trying to go up a, a road that was solid ice. Big mistake. <laughs> wow. No. Yeah, that's the same kind of Jeep you pull with your motorhome, right, bud? That's yeah. one you're talking about? Yeah, those are so nice. Absolutely yeah, the love them. The black ones? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've got my trucks are all four wheel drive. I'm a, a huge four wheel drive guy, period. You know, well, if John, you, 
John owns, John owns the, the one that was my twin. The one John bought it from, it's the first guy that put that 5.7 Hemi in him. Oh, and really? So I, yeah, so mine's the second one. You know, they're almost twin. They're almost twin. Everything he's got, I got. So, but wow. Then, yeah, I, pretty, I know. I, cool. I seen yours on at your house. I absolutely loved it. Uh, I got a, some friends around here. They're they're actually real popular around up here where I live right now. Um, you know, and I, I like I say, I'm a big four wheel drive guy. I got to have four wheel drive. You know, I don't use it every day, but boy, when you need it, it is so good to have. I got to tell you, and that's what yeah. I like about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so, but it. So who was that, John? Country. Yeah, who John? Who was that? It was just a girl that walked in off the street somewhere. That was Lori, my my wife. Well, bring her over and say hi to us. Well, I will. She's the one. She's the one that taught me everything I know about flying. Hi, Lori. How are you? <laughs> hi, hi, sweetie. How you doing? Good. Good. So he he's treating you okay up there, isn't he? Oh yeah, of course. So yeah, yeah, he's a heck of a guy, you know, yeah. Especially when he's got his flying hat on. That's pretty special, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does, yeah. does he take you flying much? Oh, sure. Yep. You bet. You bet. Does yeah. he? Very yeah. cool. Well, you know, I appreciate very much letting him come on here tonight because, you know, John is, uh, you know, he's a super big pioneer like Bud is in the industry. And uh, like I was saying at the beginning of the show that, you know, without these guys, paintball right now would not even be as close to what it is. These two pioneers did so much for the sport back in the day. Um, I can't even begin to tell you. It's just, uh, it's amazing what they've done for it. So you got yourself a heck of a guy there. That's right. That's right. I check yeah. at that. He's a good one. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> now, Lord, right. let, me, let me tell you a little bit about Lori. Go ahead. She's a, she is a... a most renowned backcountry flying instructor. She goes all over the world teaching people how to fly backcountry. That's and what she John can come up with some stories and blow you away. Yeah, that's what John was saying earlier that uh, um, that she she taught him how to fly backcountry like that. That's amazing. Oh, oh no, she is. Yeah, I she's teaching me to she was teaching me to fly until I couldn't hear. But, wow. Um, no, she is one incredible lady. Yeah, so. she looked like it. Beautiful lady too, John. She's gorgeous looking. Thank you. Yep. So. Oh man, you know we're at seven fifty nine right now, so I got one minute before this show's over. So, John, I'm going to start with you. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate you coming on tonight. And I know that that tomorrow everybody and their brother is going to watch the show tomorrow because the problem with the time frame here is back east it's late when it starts and overseas it's like three in the morning. So um, a lot of people are going to get to hear the stories. I, I got to tell you the story about naming JT and you standing in line for the license and stuff. That is an incredible story. I know it's nothing to you, but to the rest of us, it is absolutely oh, yeah. cool as hell. So I'm going to let you say goodbye um, to everybody. Uh, you see your daughter again. Give her a hug for getting you on here, man. Uh, yeah, I have to. She's yeah. gonna... And you, you, you've got an open invitation to come on my show absolutely anytime you want. So I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Thanks for asking me. I actually got a little excited here, especially... I thought I thought Bud and I were going to get into it a little bit, but we were trying to decide who was going to be the straight man. We never got that figured out. So. You know that that you actually won. that made me that actually made me a little nervous too. You know, <laughs> you you won, brother. You won, big brother. <laughs> we both won, Bud. Oh yeah, no. John is, is probably my best friend ever, and, and he just he's incredible. I mean, we. We have, we don't have to talk to have fun. Yeah. You know? no, he's, he's a good, uh, awesome guy. He's a good man. And, and John, you were very entertaining tonight. I got to tell you. 
<laughs> yes, you know, well, especially, once, once we... especially off camera, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let, let me let me see there. Hey, John, yeah. are you doing okay? Yeah. Uh, this is our impression of John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John, oh, thank you yeah. so much for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it, and I would love for you to come back on the show again sometime. Thanks for asking me, Fred. All My right. pleasure, sir. All right. You have well, a good evening, you, brother. Yeah. Tell Bill he's worthless, but uh, he, um, he kind of keeps things balanced. I see why you got him all the time. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. You take it easy, John. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. All right, everybody. That's Mr. John Gregory, um, JT fame. You know, uh, JT is still around. JT is something that will probably live on forever but you just got to listen to the guy that actually got it up and running. And uh, what a terrific guy, huh, bud? Yo, he's, and he's, Bill? He's, he's, yeah. more, he's beyond words. I just... He uh, really is. Yeah. I well, mean, so are you. I think, you know? be, I think it'd be funny if you'd still go down there to Florida and pick up trash just to see if anybody knows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see you know, I got it, up, you know? <laughs> I, I was kind of embarrassed, but, uh, you know, but I mean, he just, the guy is so plain. He, he wouldn't know he had two nickels to rub together. Well, you know, I mean, that's what I said when I first met him, you know, and I knew he had JT. I knew who he was, but he was just so smooth. And, and, and you know, it, he was not a, nothing like I expected to be. I expected to, to, to meet one of these corporate jerks yelling and screaming and all of this, man. And, and he was about okay. as smooth as glass. Just one of the nicest guys ever. Rita, Rita done a lot of the enforcement. You know, Rita was an amazing lady, man. I mean, she's um, kind of like still Kathy, is, huh? Still is, still is. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, she still is. Yeah. You know, and um, love her to death. But she is. Uh, I mean, her voice is. You know, I mean. It, it's incredible. I mean, she ought to be on TV singing. I mean, well, you know, you know that that's like Kathy. She keeps you in line pretty darn good. Oh yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Her and Rita got along good. You know? Did they? I mean, oh yeah, no. And his daughter. I mean, oh, she is. She's super neat too. You know, so, I mean, it's just a great family. You know, very cool. Yeah. And, well, but. Um, you know, as always, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on. You know, uh, you know, I love you like a brother. You know that. And uh, oh, yeah. for you to come on, everybody just loves you. They do, you know. And then now to get John on, you know, I'm sure that a gazillion people are going to wonder where John is now. Everybody's going to be so happy that he's back here and, and he's up here and talking with us. Because, you know, I, the guys that put all of this really, really formed the way a lot of things are happening today, you know, and you and John are such a huge part of that. It's not even funny. So John, John really doesn't recognize that. I mean, you know, we talk a lot about it. Oh yeah. It's all about you. You're the I same say, no, damn way. John. You're the same way. I go, I go, but I go, you're a superstar. You're like, Oh no, no I'm not. I go get out of here. But you know, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you guys are just I'm, too modest. You are, you are I'm, great. So I'm just, I'm just me. You know, yeah, well, you know, you and you and John, you know, you guys don't want to toot your horn, so I'll have to toot it for you. But you know, uh, I'm not the only one. Believe me, there's a lot of tutors out there to love you two guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna let's say goodbye to everybody, bud. All right, goodbye everybody. Love you all, and uh, hope you had a good time tonight. And uh, Bill, keep smiling. Oh, I will. Both of you. Yeah, I mean, you, you're my mentors. So. <laughs> I love you, bud. I love you. Take care. <laughs> All right, right everybody. Bye -bye. Take care. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was Mr. Bud or uh, God, Bill. What a show, Bud and John Gregory. Yeah, that's Get amazing. out of Dodge. Get uh, out of I Dodge. Would never, I would have never figured out, you know, T1 the, backwards. Wow. Never to JT. That blew me away when he said that. I could have swore it was John and the T was for something else. Yeah. You know? Yep. Unbelievable, yeah. you know, and then and then to have Bud on, you know, Bud is always such a special treat that, you know, I got I can never find words. I just, uh, you know, I can't say enough about the guy. That's how much I like him. He's just uh, what's very funny special. is, there, you know, he, he flew with John, you know, in an airplane and uh, made him crap his pants. 
But then there's people that are afraid to ride with Bud and razors because they don't want to crap their pants. So it's, I'm starting to oh. see. A, well, there's a coalition between these two guys, yeah, you know. You know, John scares the hell out of Bud when they're flying, and Bud scares the hell out of John when they're driving the razors, you know. Yeah, so. yeah it's just, uh, you know, that's why those two get along so good. But <laughs> what a couple of special guys, am I right? Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. I, I mean, having that, having those two on together is, uh, I, you know, I, I haven't even been sitting in a chair the whole time I've been floating. That's how special yeah. it's been to me. And, you know, the people that, that have watched it, I felt sorry for the people last night because, man, I bet you I got 50 or 60 texts right after we didn't do the show going, oh, man, what happened? We've been yeah. waiting to see this. So now a lot of them are going to have to wait and watch yeah. it tomorrow. But uh, I, we got I wish on. There would, I wish there would have been a way to record the, the pre- Oh my God! Podcast, oh that yeah, was one of the funniest things ever. Oh know? yeah, we we could have sold that and split it four ways and all been rich. Yeah, because these these two guys are so <laughs> damn funny. We're we're talking about the show before the show that you guys didn't get to see. Yeah. No oh my God! <laughs> oh, Bud and John oh. were just so funny. It was great. That that's why Bud was going like this. Yeah. John John kept going sideways. Picture going yeah. sideways. So. We didn't yep. want to make them feel alone, so we all no, moved over like, to the side. Don't touch any buttons. Leave it <laughs> yeah. alone. Just set it. There you go. Yeah. All right. I'm going to say goodbye real quick, Bill. All right. See you, everybody. See you next Tuesday. All right, guys. All right, you guys, hang on. Um, I'm going to say goodbye here, and we're going to jump back in the green room and talk for a few minutes. So, everybody, thank you so much for uh, tuning in tonight. You know, I feel so bad about last night. Uh, you know, I haven't had technical troubles like that before, so that just kind of blew me away. But I appreciate so much you guys watching tonight, and I appreciate an awful lot the text I got last night saying that you're really looking forward to seeing Bud and, and uh, John Gregory. And I was so pleased that I got to bring them to you tonight. So remember, everybody, until next Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook on Flagpole Productions, please play hard, play safe, play fair, to get out there and play paintball, huh, guys? All right. You guys have a good evening now. Bye-bye.